Hello dear viewers, well in the next day or so we are going to have a brand new series with Jodie Whittaker as the Doctor premiering. So now is the perfect time to look back over her first series, it's my Series 11 retrospective. So just before we start there is a wrestling and Brazilian Jiu Jitsu Facebook group I am on who had a secret Santa this year and I just want to say thank you to my secret Santa if you're watching. They bought me this excellent shirt. Gallifrey University, Time Lord Academy, Pradonian Chapter, Mount Caden Campus, or Caden Campus. Look, I'm pretty sure that's from a novel, so who knows how to pronounce it, but I absolutely love this shirt. It looks great. It fits perfectly, so if you are watching, thank you, thank you, thank you for sending me this. And little Dalek and TARDIS soaps this person sent me as well. As, uh, as part of the Secret Santa, so thank you very much for these. But onto the Series 11 retrospective. First of all, quick countdown. I know I haven't done this for a couple of reviews because I was saving it for the big thing here. So coming in at the last spot, it is the Battle of Aran's Core of Coloss. It's, yeah, easily the worst episode of the series. Following that at number 10 is the Saranga Conundrum. As you know, not my favourite, still quite enjoyable. Coming in at number nine is The Ghost Monument. And again, quite enjoyable, quite good to watch, but there's not a lot to it. It's, it's more of a get to know you episode. Coming in at number eight is Demons of the Punjab. Look, I detailed what I didn't like about this episode. I felt it did a lot of things really well, but especially for a story that's apparently about Yaz, she didn't get much to do in it. And as you know, I wasn't a big fan of the ending. Coming in at number seven is Arachnids in the UK. Is it as important a story or as about a serious topic as Demons of the Punjab? Certainly not, but it sets out to be an action adventure story and I think it succeeds very, very well there and I hope we see more of Jack Robertson. Coming in in the middle, number six, Resolution. Really enjoyable New Year special. As you know, I reviewed it just the other day and gave it an 8 out of 10. So generally the standard of this season, for me, has been quite high. Starting off the top five is The Witch Finders. Really enjoyable historical story. It does have a monster element, which perhaps it didn't need, but instead it focuses more on the human reaction to the witch hunt trials. Really, really effective and great guest performances. Coming in at number four, the season premiere, The Woman Who Fell to Earth. Really excellent at establishing the characters. It does pull Chris Jimmel's tortured trick of introducing us to someone who we think is going to be a recurring character and then killing them off very early, but still kind of bring them back as a recurring character occasionally. It also gives us very quickly the idea of who our three main companions are. Coming in at number three, Kablam! I do have problems with the ending, as do a lot of people, but unlike the problems I had with the Demons of the Punjab ending, I think we are meant to be a bit uncomfortable with the way Kablam ends. And it's still a really enjoyable action adventure, there's a good mystery at the heart of it, and it undercuts our expectations as well, and I always enjoy that. Coming in at number two, It Takes You Away. Possibly the best traditional episode of Doctor Who this season, if you like, and even then, its ideas about monsters and people are kind of inverted from what we've come to expect from Doctor Who, so it surprises us in that way. And coming in first, Rosa. I think it is very possibly the best historical episode that the new series has done. It deals with a very emotive and important historical topic with respect, reverence and thought, and it stays with the audience long after the credits roll. It's got an excellent script and moving performances. It even manages to work some humour in there as Doctor Who has to do. It treads the line expertly of being a serious historical drama and also being a Doctor Who story and marries those two worlds really well. So that's the countdown out of the way. What I've decided to do for the rest of this video is I'm going to pick the three things I really loved about this season and the three things I really didn't like that I want to see improved next season. So first of all, starting with something I liked, and that's Jodie Whittaker. Jodie Whittaker from the off convinces me as the Doctor. She has the eccentricity, she has the occasional obliviousness to the chaos she causes around her. She has those wonderful rude moments and I know I keep going back to them but I absolutely love those kind of moments where 
she's not trying to be rude, but she's managing it anyway. I love her silliness, I love her zest for life that she has. I believe next season that we're going to get a slightly darker side to her character, and something I felt all the time watching her performance this season is that darkness is always there. But coming off the back of Peter Capaldi's Doctor, there was so much darkness in what happened to that incarnation, in what happened to Clara, in what happened to Bill, in what happened to Missy, that the Doctor now just wants to have fun. She wants to show her friends the wonders of the universe. And that brings me to something that I didn't enjoy about Series 11, and something that I hope we get less of in Series 12, and that is references to adventures that sound a lot more fun than the adventures we're having. So when the Doctor says, I apologise for the Death Eye Turtle Army, when we hear about all these wonderful places they accidentally went to between the Ghost Monument and Rosa, but we don't see any of them, and even in Resolution, when we hear about all these magical New Years they've been to, and all we get is some admittedly very good graphics of fireworks out in space. I feel like it makes the world of Doctor Who feel smaller. And when Russell T Davies did it, it didn't. And I'm not sure what the difference is here. Maybe because Russell T Davies lines tended to be throwaway things, like Margaret Felfoch, Pasimir Day Slavine talking about the Venom Grubs, reminding us that the web planet existed without the Doctor saying, oh, I met some giant ants once. Maybe Chris Chibnall's writing just needs to pull back a little bit and imply more than directly telling us what happened. If Graham had just said, I remember meeting the giant turtles last week, immediately you're intrigued without feeling like you really missed out on anything. It becomes a bit of a joke. And yeah, I just feel like the adventures we're getting are already pretty good and the spectacle is good enough don't promise us stuff that we're not going to see. I find it very frustrating. Another thing I really enjoyed this season, the relationship between Ryan and Graham. Something I said about Resolution in my last review is how much I liked that Ryan and Graham and Aaron were allowed to talk about their feelings. And especially as they're all joined together by grief for Grace, I think it would have been tempting for the writing team to have made that a stalling point for the drama, that the characters can't get past their grief and therefore that keeps them distant. Now in a way that was a little bit true for the relationship between Ryan and Graham, but only very early on in the series. It wasn't a situation like Martha's love for the Doctor, which in my opinion should have been dealt with in the first five or six episodes of the series, but instead extends right the way to the end. And it really hamstrung Freema Adjaman's performance as Martha. I think she did an amazing job, but she was put behind the eight ball right from the beginning. Whereas Ryan and Graham, they do talk about Grace's death a little bit, and a little bit, and a little bit, and a little bit, which means when we get to the end of the series and Ryan accepts Graham as his grandfather and as his friend, we've been on a journey, we've earned that. It doesn't come out of nowhere. Conversely, in Resolution, I believe the, the healing has started between Ryan and Aaron, but I like that at the end there's still a bit of distance between them, there's still a bit of work to be done, but the door has opened. And I think that that is one of the true wins of Series 11. Is the development of Ryan and Graham to the point that you can bring Aaron in and have that development done in one episode because you've already laid the groundwork for that. Conversely, you know the thing I'm going to say that I don't like, that I need to see improved in series 12. Yaz needs to have a character arc. Yaz seriously needs to have a character arc. We were building it in the first episode that she is a probationary police officer who wants more. And she does get to travel the universe and that is more. But she so rarely gets to use her police skills. She questions people and gets them to trust her. But if her character had been a psychologist or a therapist, that also would have been an element of that character. And I understand that, hopefully, police officers are trained with that kind of sympathetic ear. I don't know, I've never trained as a police officer. 
But that is not something exclusive to her training as a police officer. When she picks up a gun in the Saranga conundrum, we believe that can be the case. But I also think it's very telling that in the Battle of Ranskoy of Kolos, it's not Yaz who wants to shoot Tim Shaw. It's Graham. You get the impression that Yaz wanted to join the police force to help people. And I think that's a very noble element of her character. I think it needs to be explored more, and it needs to be explored explicitly. Because as I keep saying, Yaz is kept on the outer because she is not part of the Ryan and Graham healing over Grace's death. Yaz knew Grace when Yaz was a very young girl, but then doesn't see her for years and years and years. And that was a missed opportunity, because there is no reason in the plot of The Woman Who Fell to Earth that Yaz couldn't have known Ryan all the way through. You know, they could be old mates. It actually makes more sense for Ryan to call Yaz directly and say, mate, I know you're a police officer, I want you to look at this strange thing I've found, rather than just calling the police and randomly getting Yaz. You know, unless we find out that Missy is working in dispatch and is manipulating the Doctor into making friends with people again, but I don't think we're going to get that, to be honest with you. Amanda Gill is a capable actress, and I want the show to push her character in new directions in the new series. I think we are going to get that. I like to hope it was a conscious decision for this first series to focus on Ryan and Graham because we know that Yaz is going to stick around for a second series. But if we just get more of the same next series, I will be really, really disappointed. So, yeah, more for Yaz to do because I like Yaz. Mandip has done such a good job with so little compared to the other two companions that I think she really deserves a fair crack next season. Now, this next part might be controversial, but hear me out. I really like that aside from the Dalek in the last episode, we didn't have any old monsters back, we didn't have any old characters back, we only had the slightest of references to the series past. I liked that the main series itself steered clear of the existing continuity. Chris Chibnall knew when he cast a woman as the Doctor that there would be a vocal, and I believe it's fair to say minority, of viewers, not just fans, but viewers, the general public, because, you know, there's not 8 million Doctor Who fans watching every episode, there's 7 to 8 million viewers of whom a proportion are fans. But Chris Chibnall knew there would be a vocal minority of viewers who would not accept a woman as a doctor. And then even a larger group who would be deeply sceptical of a woman as the doctor. And so the temptation must have existed to say, we don't know how this new doctor is going to go, so we are going to throw everything but the kitchen sink at the series. We're going to have the Ice Warriors, we're going to have the Cybermen, we're going to have Daleks, we're going to have Zygons, we're going to bring River Song back so we make it very clear that this is the same character. But instead, Chris Chibnall decided that the enemies of the series, the companions and the Doctor would be all new. I believe it was a conscious decision to make sure this series would stand on its own, to make sure these characters could stand on their own. And I know that in our circle of fandom, it's easy to see a lot of the negativity and see it amplified and think that that is the prevailing thought of the series. For the general public though, series 11 was very popular. The audience appreciation index hovered around the 80 mark, which is good, and even the lowest rated episode, It Takes You Away, was 6.42 million viewers. That is higher than any episode, bar three, in Peter Capaldi's second two series. Now, I'm not including Christmas specials in that because they rate higher than the series generally. I'm just including the regular episodes in that. So, for the general public, the series was a success. I'm a little worried, I'm not going to lie because Series 12 is going out at an earlier time of year. I don't think Doctor Who's been on in January since, what, the early 80s? There's... There's no precedent in the modern era to know how these episodes will rate. And I'm just really hoping that 
on average, they stay around that 7 million mark. I think the BBC would consider that a great success. If they drop too far below it, we're starting to get into the category of Peter Capaldi's last series, which was not seen as a huge rating success. Chris Chibnall said he wanted it as a recruitment year, and I think it worked. But we'll know in about a week after the uh, ratings for Spyfall Part 1 come through, so stay tuned. Off the back of how the audience responded to the episodes though, the thing I really want them to improve next series is publicity. There is this cone of silence around Cardiff. I subscribe to Doctor Who magazine and there is so little news coming out of Cardiff about the series leading up to it. I understand the production team's desire for secrecy. It was something that unfortunately went by the wayside a bit towards the end of Stephen Moffat's run through, I think, no fault of the production team. Things like John Sims' return being spoiled even after the BBC said to the press screening, hey, try not to tell people about this, and someone did and they had to hastily cobble together an announcement. So I kind of get why that's happening, but frankly, there are ways to just drip feed information without revealing anything. You can have just once a month or once every couple of weeks someone interviewed on the set and say, oh, you know, here we are in Spain and this episode is going to be really emotional. You don't have to reveal anything, but you can still have that publicity. This even goes as far as, you remember when the logo was revealed and it's also at the front of the DVDs, you get this clip of the logo against this background of crystals and people thought, well, hey, that's what the opening title sequence is gonna be like. And then the opening title sequence was completely different, but they still keep that crystal thing around. But it's even things like, we, we basically just had a gap year for this series, which in the grand scheme of things, it's only been a delay of three months, you know, from October to January for a start date. It hasn't been 18 months, it hasn't been two years, it's been 15 months instead of 12, the kind of delay. But Series 11 built up all this momentum and people had accepted Jodie Whittaker as the Doctor. I'm not necessarily saying all fans, obviously, and I know there's going to be people in the comments saying, you know, I don't like Jodie Whittaker. You know what? Here's the thing. Here's the test, right? If you can say, I don't like Jodie Whittaker, but I'd really like to see Olivia Colman in the role, or I'd like to see Whoopi Goldberg in the role, or I'd like to see Phoebe Waller-Bridge, if you can name another woman you would like to see in the role, it is not sexist to say you don't like Jodie Whittaker. But if you say, a woman can't play the Doctor, that is a sexist statement. It is. Because we have already had Time Lords change gender during their regeneration. We've had Missy, we've had the General. There is no reason we can't have a woman as the Doctor. And you might think it's odd that I mentioned Jennifer Saunders, but as much as I'm enjoying Jodie Whittaker, Jennifer Saunders has always been my first choice <laughs> for a woman as the Doctor. I adore Jennifer Saunders. But moving on. If you want to say in the comments you don't like Jodie Whittaker as the Doctor, that is fine. But she is the Doctor. Whether you like it or not. She is going to be the Doctor for the coming series, and spoiler alert, at least the next series after that. There is no way she wasn't going to do three years, despite all those rumours coming out of Cardiff. But even with those rumours, right, those rumours exist because the production team are not putting out any information. If they put out information saying, we're good, we're having a fantastic time, look at us in South Africa, aren't, isn't everything wonderful, then the rumours wouldn't be able to snowball the way they do. It is not the BBC's fault that these rumours happen, but the BBC can do more to mitigate them and control the conversation around the show. And the big thing I can't understand that didn't happen in 2019 is we could have had more spin-off media. There are comics, yes, there's Doctor Who magazine, yes, but where are the novels? The first three Jodie Whittaker novels from 2018 were very well received. When David Tennant had a gap year, there were, I think, six or nine novels published that year. I don't understand why when the show came back, we went from having a monthly novel range to having six a year. It doesn't make sense to me. And this could have been a great time to have six more novels this year keep the show in mind. We could have had some more audio original stories, as were so popular with The Last Three Doctors. And, yeah, I don't know why that didn't happen. 
So that's my other thing that I want to see improved for next series. So there you have it, the three things I loved about the series and the things I so think need improvement for series 12. From the trailers we've seen, I am optimistic that it's going to be addressed. I think we are going to have more focused stories. We know, for instance, that some old monsters are back if you've been avoiding trailers. I'm not going to spoil it here for you. But, yeah, there's some very effective imagery in those trailers. And hopefully the Doctor will get a bit more a bit more anger, a bit more bite, a bit more steel to her. I would like to see that. I want to see more from Yaz. I want to see more from Mandip. I'd love to see more of Yaz's family. I thought they were underused, but where they were used, they were very effective. I want to see more confidence in Ryan and Graham's relationship now that that's been put to the test. And, you know, what? I think we're going to get some conflict between our heroes and maybe... You know, maybe we needed 11 episodes of them getting along for that conflict to mean something. Maybe Chris Chibnall is building up to something far bigger than any of us realise. I'm sure we're going to hear more about The Timeless Child this year because... Look, they could have cut that out of the Ghost Monument really easily if they weren't going to follow up on it. You know, it's one, it's one line in one scene. Just chop it out, scene ends, you're absolutely fine. I am optimistic about Series 12. I really hope you are as well. But let me know what you're hoping for, and look, we don't have long to find out. As usual, thank you so much for watching. Say Something Nice will return in the new year. Um, look, I'm really hoping that my uploads are a bit more regular from the end of January after this work outside my building has been completed. But until then, thank you very much for watching, and enjoy Spyfall tomorrow. Happy New Year, everyone.